My name is Saroosh Reis Barami, and I'm an assistant professor of urology and radiology here at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. I'm in the Division of Urologic Oncology, and today I'll be talking to you about multiparametric prostate MRI and MRI ultrasound fusion guided biopsy for cancer screening and detection. Prostate cancer is routinely diagnosed by random and indirect sampling, and it's one of the only solid organ malignancies that is diagnosed this way. This fact is linked to the historical lack of reliable imaging for localizing tumors within the prostate gland. The role of transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy and MRI is a novel area that we'd like to talk about today. So prostate cancer detection has classically followed a paradigm for the past two to three decades, which is based on a digital rectal exam performed by a physician for clinical staging of disease, assessment of a serum PSA level, which recently the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force gave a grade D recommendation to for widespread serum PSA screening. And then based on the digital rectal exam findings and serum PSA level, a systematic sextant biopsy schema, whereby transrectal ultrasound is used to allow for standard of care biopsies in different zip codes or different regions of the prostate, essentially a random sampling of tissue cores within different areas of the prostate. This is the same sampling approach which has been used for several decades now. Now the standard of care has increased the number of cores that are sampled, but the mechanism by which they're taken is exactly the same, and the random nature within different areas of the prostate is exactly the same as it has been for several decades. Transrectal ultrasound, and how is it clinically used today? Again, the standard of care is the process by which urologists use transrectal ultrasound to measure the prostate gland during the procedure, ensure that the sampling of needle cores is within the prostate gland. The ultrasound is also used to identify relative regions or those zip codes of the biopsies to space the random biopsies across different regions of the prostate. But rarely is transrectal ultrasound used to localize loci of cancer suspicion. There's some reports that there's a possible value to hypoechoic areas seen on ultrasound correlating to areas of cancer. However, in some studies, 40 to 60% of targeting these hypoechoic regions come back with normal prostate tissues. Multiparametric prostate MRI is a novel technology which incorporates both anatomic and functional imaging. Different sequences make up this multiparametric study. T2-weighted composite images measure the water content and give very fine anatomic soft tissue resolution. Tumor areas are seen as water poor or dark on this sequence. Another sequence or parameter used is diffusion-weighted imaging, whereby the imaging measures the diffusion of water within the tissues, and this is a more functional imaging study. Tumor areas are typically seen as dense or dark on this diffusion-weighted imaging. Dynamic contrast-enhanced scans are the third parameter used in multiparametric prostate MRI, whereby we measure the contrast flow into and out of the prostate gland tissue. Tumors are typically seen as hypervascular areas, or areas that are bright at a very early phase on the dynamic contrast enhanced scan. A specialized scan which is very functional is magnetic resonance spectroscopy, which is not used in all centers, but this mechanism allows for measurement of uh, tissue levels of choline and citrate. These concentrations are then compared to one another in a ratio format, and typically normal prostate tissue is very high in citrate levels. So why fuse MRI and ultrasound? It takes advantage of the benefits of either modality. So MRI, as we talked about, has amazing spatial resolution for soft tissue qualities. The sensitivity and specificity for identifying areas of tumor burden is very high. Transrectal ultrasound allows for temporal resolution and real-time use for guidance of the needle biopsy cores during the procedure. And it's very cost-effective and present in essentially all urologist offices. So MRI ultrasound fusion-guided prostate biopsies are an office-based local anesthetic procedure. There's minimal additional patient discomfort for significantly added yield of diagnosis by incorporating the diagnostic MRI on the front end. It utilizes widely available imaging technologies, as we already discussed, that ultrasounds for guidance of needle biopsies of the prostate are present in most urologist offices. 
and these urologists are already trained in transrectal ultrasound guided biopsies. So now we'll discuss some of the data on MRI ultrasound fusion guided biopsies. There's higher rates of prostate cancer detection compared to random biopsies, which are the standard of care at the current time. There's higher rates of detecting clinically significant prostate cancers by using this higher level image guidance. As a result, there's less upgrading to radical prostatectomy based on the fusion guided biopsies compared to the random biopsies that are currently performed as standard of care. There's also better prediction of tumor volumes based upon radical prostatectomy pathology outcomes. So this is a prime setting to incorporate MRI into the pre-biopsy screening setting for patient care. There was an NIH study that both Dr. Nix and I were involved in, which looked at the results of a biparametric prostate MRI in men without any prior biopsies of the prostate. The biparametric parametric prostate MRI incorporated T2-weighted imaging as well as diffusion-weighted imaging, obviating the need for contrast administration and MR spectroscopy. The results of the biparametric prostate MRI in these patients who had never had their prostate sampled outperformed PSA as well as PSA density in prostate cancer detection. Results of this limited, time-efficient MRI combined with PSA or PSA density, outperformed other reported diagnostic studies for predicting prostate cancer detection. The area under the curves were 0.83 and 0.86, respectively. Thinking of this as a screening filter after a digital rectal exam and PSA, which is currently the accepted paradigm, demonstrated that incorporation of this biparametric MRI can identify a significant portion of high-grade cancers when screened positive without identifying patients who would not have cancer detected on these biopsies. Alternatively, incorporating the biparametric MRI in screen negative patients demonstrated essentially missing no high-grade cancers if biopsies were actually eliminated from the scheme. So a clinical vignette. We recently had a patient that Dr. Nix and I took care of, a 64-year-old gentleman with PSA elevation. He was first seen by his urologist referred by his primary care doc for a PSA of 3.5 just a year ago in 2013. It was then further elevated to 4.6 in July of 2014. The patient's family history is significant for his father, who had prostate cancer diagnosed in his late 50s. This patient had gone, undergone no prior biopsies. He underwent multiparametric MRI here at UAB as seen on the screen adjacent. T2-weighted imaging is demonstrating an area of low intensity. Diffusion-weighted imaging demonstrates low intensity, and there's early contrast uptake on the third image. Targeting with MR ultrasound fusion-guided biopsy demonstrated high-grade disease in the targeted area, which we see on the screen. This demonstrated Gleason 4 plus 4 equals 8 prostate cancer, which is high-risk disease. Other biopsies taken demonstrated either benign or very low-grade areas of cancer without the targeting. So avoiding pitfalls of prior screening paradigms is something that the MRI allows for. MRI provides a personalized targeting of areas of suspicion, unlike using PSA alone. PSA elevations, as we know, are not specific for prostate cancer. PSA elevations can be seen as a result of growing prostates with benign prostatic hyperplasia, inflammation or infection with prostatitis, and also with prostate cancer, as we know. MRI is not biased to one area of the prostate. The digital rectal exam localizes nodules, but it localizes them only when they're palpated along the posterior surface, which is adjacent to the rectum where they could be felt. MRI gives a 3D view through the entire prostate gland. MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy also allows for real-time targeting of MRI lesions without altering the patient experience as we discussed before. It's an office-based procedure under local anesthesia, very similar to the transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy. Transrectal ultrasound is still used to guide the needle placement as before, and the fusion software outside of the patient experience is what allows the previously imported diagnostic MRI to actually guide the biopsies. So where does the future of MRI screening exist in prostate cancer? We'd like to further optimize the prostate MRI study to limit the time and cost of the test, as was done with that biparametric study done at the NIH. We'd like to balance with the improved detection of otherwise occult prostate cancers, which will in turn 
lessen the number of biopsy sessions that patients need to undergo to improve the accuracy of their diagnosis. Also, this in turn decreases the risk of infections because of the decreased number of biopsy cores that are sampled. The improved detection of clinically significant cancers also decreases overtreatment of prostate cancer, which has been a dilemma over the past two decades. This allows for safer active surveillance enrollment and confirmation that we are appropriately staging our patients if active surveillance is the route that's chosen.